Bartenders of Reddit, what is the craziest story you have from behind the mahogany? I was bartending at this German sports bar in the late afternoon early evening when two of my regulars came in. After a few rounds one of the men says he's going to take a smoke and for his friend to watch his things. The guy gets up from his chair, takes a few steps patting down his pockets and realizes he forgot his smokes. While still walking toward the door, he says hey Cletus, throw me a cig. His friend opens his pack and without looking chucks it in the direction of his friend walking toward the door. At that exact moment, he spun around, and the cigarette landed straight in his mouth, in smoking position. He continued to turn back to face the door then stopped dead in his tracks, realizing what had just happened. We all then continued to freak out and realize that will never happen again in a million years. I love that it took him a second to even realize what had happened. I'd probably quit smoking after that. For the sole reason that every cigarette afterwards would never be as cool as that one time. How <laughs> mines from an Irish pub too. In CA. I worked for these two brothers who owned the place. They are from Ireland. Anyway the cops in this town are extremely power crazy. From lack of anything better to do in an affluent area. Anyway. This guy is at the bar getting shit housed. He's nice though. He walks outside for a cig. Stumbles a little bit. Leans against a tree. Finishes up and comes back in. A couple cops follow him into the bar and come up behind him. They accost him, not sure for what reason. He was quiet outside and I watched him the whole time. And he didn't do anything out of the ordinary. Anyway they grab him and say you're drunk. You're under arrest for public intoxication. Now, yeah the dude is drunk. But he's been in before and he always cabs home or something. I say hey he is not drunk in public. He's in a private establishment and leave him alone. He's not harming anyone. I admit, I'm no lawyer, so I'm not sure of the technicalities behind him being in public or not, but it was still fricked up. The cops tell me to shut the frick up, which I don't. So they then say okay fine. Now he'll be drunk in public and drag this guy out of the bar into the street. I'm flipping out, but what could I do? One of my bosses was in back, and here's what's going on. Only a few seconds have passed. Now I had worked with the other brother before, and this was my first time working with meeting this particular brother. Being the scrappy little Irishman that he is, he comes out and screams what the frick is this and hops over the bar, runs out the front, and tackles one of the officers to defend his patron. Other cop lets go of their original target, and whips out his nightstick and starts taxing my boss, while he wails on the other cop. He gets beaten pretty badly, and there's a lot of folks watching by this point, and the cops look around and simply leave. A couple employees bring my boss back in, and he's got blood all over his face. He looks at me and says, Hey there, what's your name, lad? Don't believe we've met yet. This all went down so quickly that I just stood there poker faced until that moment. Then we all had a laugh and got drunk. There were no legal repercussions on any party involved in this event. Your boss is a freaking badass. I work in a big butt brew pub right on the edge of a big nightlife swanky section of town. One night it was pretty slow and this one woman walks in and sits at the bar and asks for garlic. I assume she's from nearby, nicely dressed and polite speaker, maybe she needs some garlic to cook with. So I run down to the kitchen and fill a small to go box with some garlic cloves. I come back, hand her the box, and she can barely contain herself. Saying how I and another server she had seen that day, apparently she had been at a friend's party earlier on, might explain the odd behavior, restored her faith in people. She handed me a $10 bill to try and pay, I told her it was on the house. So she put the bill in my pocket, sat down at a bar, and started munching on the raw garlic cloves. She ordered up a grey goose and soda, so I certainly didn't mind her hanging around the bar. So she proceeded to munch on garlic and tell me a bit about herself, how she was a local, doing well with her and her friend running a small business together, and asked if I was single because she knew some girls who would absolutely love me. I lied on that one because I wasn't too comfortable with the thought of a slightly off a rocker 40 year old trying to set me up. After another vodka soda and some more garlic, she proceeds to give me a $20 tip, more than 100% tip and a scarf from her business to give to your girl, as she put it. I proceeded to trade the scarf for 15 beer slips from my boss. After giving me the $10, I tried to give it back to her. She then threatened to throw up on the bar if I didn't keep it. TL. DR. Oddball a woman walked into my bar, 
asked for garlic, proceeded to eat garlic cloves raw, tipped me $30 and a scarf for being nice to her. As a scarf fanatic, I'm jealous, and it's odd, but sweet. One Halloween, there was a dry rave next door to the bar I worked in so obviously we were busy. Two couples dressed as Chippendales and strippers walked in and ordered some shooters at the bar. The one guy sits at one of the stools and starts making out with the girl with the bigger tee. He proceeds to rip her shirt down and shove his hand up her skirt and before anybody could say anything, he pulls his hand out from her crotch and wipes her freaking juices on the bar. Obviously we kick them out. I was working at a bar a few weeks ago and this girl just dropped down at the bar and started blowing a guy. The bar wasn't even that packed. It was funny watching guys mac on her later that night who had no idea. I was a bartender for 10 years in Nick and saw tons of crazy and messed up things that I don't want to repeat. Here's a good one. I worked a neighborhood bar and had tons of regulars from all walks of life. Every bartender has a gift and mine is remembering people's drinks in the specific way it's made. If you're picky about your martini, you want me to be your bartender. Anyway, a rabbi in his late 60s would come in every Monday at 6.30pm not dinner rush yet, 8pm a nick, but people are starting to trickle in. I never knew his name and just always called him rabbi. Rabbi's drink was a Rob Roy, straight up with red label scotch and barely a splash of sweet vermouth shaken in plain ice then drained. Then I added the booze and swiftly stirred in order to cool the drink without watering it down. Finished it off with a lemon twist wipe on the rim of a chilled glass. Rabbi had been a regular for 4 years when one day, I saw him walking in so I began making his drink. The bar was unusually busy and all 6 tables and all bar stools were filled. I poured Rabbi's drink and then went to take care of tables. I was slammed, was making a drink order when I noticed Rabbi not drinking, but instead stiffening up for a moment before he fell backwards and completely hit the ground, hard. I jumped over the bar and saw that he was holding his arm. I thought it was a heart attack but not sure. He asked me to call a special ambulance service. Can't remember the name but it was Hasidic. I ran across the street to a bodega and hurriedly asked for aspirin. Didn't have time to pay, just ran back to the bar and shoved it in rabbi's mouth and made him swallow it with water. I was shocked when dinner customers were complaining about not having ketchup and yelled at the entire bar. Can't you see we have a man who may be having a heart attack frick your ketchup. The ambulance showed up and unfortunately dropped him twice I got fed up with them and called 9. 1. 1. The fire department was there first and took care of the entire situation. I thought that rabbi had died because I hadn't seen him in several weeks. One day, I was pleasantly surprised when I saw rabbi limping into the bar with the assistance of a younger man who turned out to be his son. His son told me that his dad had insisted on visiting me to thank me for saving his life. It turned out that three of his arteries were almost fully closed and if he hadn't had the aspirin, he would have died. TL. DR. So, a rabbi walks into a bar, and I may have saved his life. Kudos for doing what you did. Also kudos for frick your ketchup. I am not a bartender, but I was in a bar staffed by a friend of my boyfriend's, and it's a fairly quiet night, and suddenly there's this muffled thwump sound, and utter silence falls over the entire room. A woman halfway down the bar had dropped her goddamn baby on the floor. At first read, I thought you meant the baby fell out of her womb onto the floor. Mine aren't so crazy as they are sad, since I used to work at a sports club with many poker machines. I did bar service and payouts, giving people poker machine credit slips, so you saw a lot of people down on their luck, others who were clearly addicted. Sup was to report the people to supervisors and you know, duty of care and all that, we were supposed to provide them with gambling helpline materials. Never once saw it happen. There were some awesome pokey players too, though. Biggest tip I ever got was $175, odd, and people don't normally tip an horse. After one of our regulars who liked me won several thousand. This guy owned a bunch of businesses and drove either a gorgeous Harley or gorgeous Mercedes. He went through thousands like it was pocket change. Probably was for him. One amusing thing was when a new guy came in to try his luck. I think he was there to have dinner with the family or something. Anyway, his first time ever playing a poker machine. He's playing one cent machines. Typically lowest risk, lowest reward, and he bets 25 cents. Second spin, he gets a jackpot. Not an unheard of occurrence with how jackpots work. 
It was a slow night and I was watching from behind the bar thinking he'd probably just gotten jackpot 4 which capped out at around $25. Yeah, no. Guy spent 50 cents and got jackpot 1, which was worth $23.000 at the time. Never saw him again. Smart man. I used to bartend for an upscale catering company, weddings, corporate events, etc. Worst story ever was a white trashy ray wedding. They only contracted our company for the bar, and it was a cheaper place doing the food. Worst night of tips I had at that job, by a large statistical margin. But that wasn't the worst part. Both bride and groom had children from a previous marriage. The groom's son, in particular, was quite endearing to me. He was middle school age, and smart as all heck. The rare small child who can hold a semi-adult conversation and hold his own. I kept him stocked with Shirley Temples all night, and we talked a fair amount of baseball. So the wedding party decided to commemorate the occasion with shot glasses for the wedding party. But said shot glasses were put to use, aggressively, throughout the night. At the end, as we're packing everything up, one of the shot glasses is left on the counter. Most of the guests have gone by this point. Both bride and groom are well into their 40s, so by 10.30, even, the place was fairly empty. I ask around about the shot glass, and find out that it belongs to the groom. He is seated with his son and the bride's daughter at a table by the dance floor. I walk over, the groom is barely coherent, passing out in the chair. The children are trying in vain to keep him awake. At the same time as me, a few other people notice this situation and begin assisting with him. With the situation under control, I want as little to do with this sordid reminder of the broken home I come from. I set the shot glass on the table, and go to leave. But as I take a step away, the little girl tells me please don't give it back to him, he'll drink more then. I stop, and the son grabs the shot glass and pockets it. He reassures me that he'll keep it from his dad for the rest of the night. The look in his eyes tells me that he means it. It's a look I know all too well. I've never wanted to quit a job more in my life than that drive home. I work in a hotel bar in the UK. I've seen some interesting things over the last 3 years of working in this place. Bar fights between the fathers of the brides and grooms on the wedding day, full-blown marital arguments, drunken millionaires, inappropriately aged women slipping me their room keys, drunken Japanese businessmen falling asleep at on the bar and 18 hours shifts over New Year's. My favorite story, though, is the one I trot out when I talk with the new staff that I end up training on the bar. The day that I turned up to find a crap behind the bar, it was a lovely color of brown, a bestial brown, if you are a Warhammer fan. I was a little surprised, so I informed the duty manager of it, who came around, had a little laugh about it with me then I cleaned it up. End of the story, number, I started asking around the staff to hear if anything else similar had happened in the last few days, trying to identify our phantom shitter, it turned out that this one guest had some mental problems and had been defecating at random throughout the hotel and on the bus that he was part of the tour with, I think he was with his parents on the trip, he'd crap in his room, he'd crap outside his hotel room door, he'd crap on the coach. He also wandered out of the hotel on his own and into the town center and was terrorizing the local branch of the Halifax Bank. I like to use it as an idea of how each day at work can be completely unlike the one before. Plus one for Warhammer color schemes. Although, I now feel strange knowing exactly what shade of poop you saw. I was bartending waitressing in a bar back home. Small town. This bar tends to attract the older crowd. More of a pub really. One of our busier nights we had a decently mixed crowd including two young couples sitting together. They were all nice enough, polite and tipped well. Each guy had an arm around their respective girl and they seemed to be having fun. About half an hour later the other waitress comes up to me and asks about the table. It's not a huge bar. I know who she's talking about when she describes them. She says we have to kick them out. I thought maybe they got in a fight with someone or something, so I asked her what happened. I just caught them fricking in the bathroom. That's right, not one guy and a girlfriend, the two guys. I guess she had been standing beside the door when a customer opened the door and everyone got an eyeful. We had single occupancy bathrooms, with a dang lock. The girlfriends had been sitting at the table the whole time, unaware as far as I know. When we went to ask them to leave they were already gone. 
It wasn't anyone having a problem with two guys fricking. It was the fact that anyone was fricking in that tiny bathroom. When the other waitress told me we both had a good chuckle and were glad they were already gone so we didn't have to do anything about it. I also work at an Irish pub in the Netherlands and we have slot machines. Our regulars spend a lot of money on them. When I first started working there almost a year ago there was a female regular so caught up in the machine that she didn't want to stop and take a bathroom break. Keep in mind that it was a quiet afternoon and the only ones there were her and some other regulars, so she would not have to be afraid of losing her spot. So she proceeded to urinate on the stool she was sitting on. So we kicked her in the stool out, got a new stool and I personally never saw her in the pub again. Funny how people don't realize that the first pull has the same chance of winning as the 1000th. Okay, the house can control the payout, but they're machines with certain percentage guaranteed payouts. This is a sad and horrible story. But ending one night I had a group of younger kids, near 21, come in. I recognized a girl from a mutual friend we shared. Her man introduced himself as Satan and proceeded to be in butt the entire night. Finally I had to put him out. He was being verbally abusive to his girl and others. He refused to pay I confronted and was convincing. He actually lowered his head and handed me his entire wallet. I refused to touch his wallet got his girl to pull the money out. Apparently super upset from me putting him in his place he was snapping on his girlfriend to the point where she came back inside and asked me and others to keep him away from her. Because she knew me she asked if she could leave with me. I told her it wasn't a good idea for many reasons. But I'll let her stay until she got a right to pick her up. She left. 30 minutes later I saw police cars and an ambulance scream by. I didn't find out until the next day when my boss called me asking me to come in. The police wanted to speak to me. He effin killed that girl. He stabbed her through the torso with a decorative katana. And my understanding is he claimed in wrestling the katana from her. Yada yada. Basically plead to some petty manslaughter get out in two years type of bulls. I told the police everything I could to get him put away, his aggressive demeanor, verbal abuse to her, threatening me, I'll always wonder if maybe me standing up to him triggered some crazy response in him, it was a waste, she was beautiful, and that's the story about when I met Satan, his real name ended up being Michael something, I wish I knew it all so I could put him on blast, ironically, her name was Angel, R.I.P. Not your fault man. For all you know your intervention could have stopped him from hurting even more people. Don't blame yourself, a million things could have happened. I was working the night of the 2010 Grey Cup game, Canada's Super Bowl. It was a super busy night, the riders were playing so the place was packed, and I crap you not during half time this huge bastard walks in wearing giant sunglasses, a trench coat and a hard hat, drunk as frick. I watch him take a step towards the bar and he stops dead and just stands there for a few seconds. All of a sudden he opens his coat and pulls out this giant freaking salami, takes a bite, yells frick ya as loud as possible while holding up the 3 foot long salami log and just walks out stumbling. Was bartending at a family owned Tex-Mex place in New Hampshire. A co-worker and I were chatting about something on the news and I said yeah, at least it's not Russia suddenly from the end of the bar a massive woman with a thick accent yells. V-A-H-T you say about Russia? She then started regaling the entire bar with stories of the Soviet glory days. Babbling on in a crazy Bond villain accent about how great everything used to be. She proceeded to finish her margarita. Left a $10 on the bar. And walked out. We then noticed that she'd peed all over the stool. We ended up throwing away the stool. I worked in a very high volume cocktail bar. One night around Christmas there was a DJ playing pumping big band swing. This was in the UK so everyone was freaking annihilated. There was this really hammered dwarf who would repeatedly stagger over to the bar. Get a bartender to lean all the way over to hear him and then whisper. I'm sorry I'm a little drunk before exploding with laughter and then staggering back to the dance floor. I can't think of crazier stories but this one stands out as one of the funniest scenes. 
I am not a bartender but security but this just happened the other night, so we are closing up the joint and this crazy lady who has been talking to herself and cursing for the last half hour decides to go into the bathroom. She is in there for maybe 8 minutes and we are trying to get everyone out so we make her come out. She finally leaves the bathroom and this dude gives her a little bit of crap about hogging the one bathroom, the lady's room was out of service so we were down to one. She proceeds to start screaming every curse word I can think of at this guy, and while she is yelling at him she just starts pee her pants. Well she finishes pee and we push her out the door, and then she comes around knocking on the windows and flipping people off. She looks at me, blows me a kiss and I bow in return, and then she goes back to flipping everyone else off. A girl who was with the guy goes what is she saying I tell her that she is telling me to have a good night but apparently everyone else can go frick themselves. I used to work at a horse racing track. The place was over a hundred years old and had all sorts of weird corridors and cheap walls. We did Friday night racing and about 5pm this guy was already crap faced drinking scotch. He offered to slip me $5 if I would give him free booze all night. Yay right lol. Eventually he goes missing and his friend who was a lot more sober and quite nice asks if I've seen him. I say no I haven't seen him since around 6pm and now it's about 9p. All of a sudden I hear bam, bang, boom an extremely loud commotion coming from the ladies washroom soon followed by a man covered head to toe in blood casually walking out of the bathroom trying to act as nonchalant as possible. Like nothing happened and the whole bar wasn't staring at him. Turns out the guy had found a place where there was some construction in a restricted area and was climbing around in the walls and eventually found the ladies room where we suspect he was watching women pee. A support beam must have gave way or he just slipped. He must have fell at least 20 feet through all sorts of wood, metals, wires and then into a bathroom stall. The average age of a women customer in my bar was at least mid 50s so I hope he had fun. And yes, he was apprehended by security and arrested. You don't know that. Maybe he was watching them poop. But ending at an Indian restaurant just outside of DC. Big bar. Not many people ever come to the actual bar. Simply go straight to dinner. But one woman sits at the bar and looks at our appetizer menu. She asks if there's anything that isn't spicy because apparently she had just come from surgery where a portion of her tongue was removed. I pointed out the most bland thing and put in an order while she ordered a vodka tonic. When the order comes out, she eats a few bites and proceeds to sweat profusely. She runs to the bathroom repeatedly and is freaking out all the while asking for multiple vodka tonics. After our owner came out and apologized, he offered to take chicken and have it cooked in bland yogurt. He gave her the drinks for free and the specially made chicken as well. She then freaked out a little further when he left, saying she would take it and feed it to her dog and asked for one more vodka tonic before she left. Either she was seriously crazy, or deviously smart. Who comes to an Indian restaurant after having a portion of your tongue removed and sensitivity to spices? If my tongue was really sensitive, vodka tonic is not what I would be drinking. I've been raised in the hospitality industry in Australia. My family have owned and run hotels and bars since well before I was born. Needless to say I have seen some pretty incredible crap in my time, but by far the best was watching my mother, all 5 feet 7 inches of her, come out from behind the bar to grab two brawling bikers by their beards, twist the hair in her fists till their eyes watered and they stopped punching on, and then demand that they each took a bar stool and sit in opposite corners of the bar or she would, and I quote directly, give them a freaking hiding that their mothers would be proud to witness. At this point I'm figuring that I'll be burying my mother the next day unless I do something, so I grab hold of the baseball bat we keep under the bar and go to launch myself over the counter when, to the surprise of everyone in the pub, these hard butt bikies do exactly as they're told and don't move until my mother tells them to get a 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 from that day onward I never stepped on the wrong side of the old girl again. Till that Aussie mothers are not to be fricked with. I used to be a cut girl when I was in university so I had to put up with some huge creeps who thought I liked being hit on by old men. The worst was during a tournament that was put on for police officers, not sure what division it was. One jackbutt totally crossed the line. I usually drive by and ask the golfers if I could get them anything and one cop said yay, a blow job. I was so furious that I snapped well I'm sure one of your buddies wouldn't mind doing that for you and drove off. 
I told the other cart girls to avoid them for the rest of the day. Don't pee off the people who are getting you drinks. I've been at my bar for about 5 years now. It's a little dive bar in Sacramento, CA. We sling some great drinks and have a blast. About a year after I had started working there, I was about 22. Three good looking girls come into the bar and sit down. All three of them were probably at least a solid 7. After about 3-4 rounds, they start talking about backdoor riding with their significant others. It was almost a stereotypical conversation. One girl tried it and hated it. One girl was still uneasy about it. And the last. Well she loved it. Loved it so much that she told a story about how her and her dude were in Macy's after some afternoon delight. I was pouring a draft beer at the time. Trying my hardest not to make it blatantly obvious that I was listening to every word they were saying. The story went on about how they were downstairs of Macy's when the girl had to let out a little fart. Well, as she went to let out her fart, CM came out of her butt. So much that she had to rush to the bathroom. My efforts to be sneaky about not listening to what they were saying failed when I dropped the 3 stroke 4 full glass of beer on the ground and spraying tap beer all over the place from dying of laughter. And to this day, the story has burned a hole in my soul. I'm sorry boss, this girl farted CM I could help it. I now manage a bar right outside DC where I've bartended for at least 5 years. Some of these didn't happen to me personally, but to a coworker. One, naked man comes in, asks for drink. The bartender calls the police. Police come, cuff him, wrap him in newspaper because he had shat himself, and carry him away. Two, our 18 year old, fresh faced busser, still has braces. Gets a BJ in the bathroom at our closed holiday party by a 50 something semi regular who somehow managed to get in. Three times in the next week she comes in saying Seth owes me money. The last time she came in, she brought a dude who was obviously her pimp. A veiled threats ensue. I ban her then next time I see her. 3. Semi regular drops a bag with a good amount of herb in it. Once we close, a server finds it and puts it in the safe for me. Guy comes back the next day wondering if um, anyone found, you know, anything on the ground, we respond. Well we can't tell you if we found it unless you tell us what it is. He shakes his head and leaves. 4. Guy tries to get server's attention by poking her with a fingernail file. Draws blood. Bartender boots him with extreme prejudice. Guy comes back later that week and the same bartender was working. Bartender asks him what the frick he thinks he's doing there and guy rears back and pokes the bartender in the eye as hard as he can. Not a he tried to hit him but accidentally poked him poke. But a I'm gonna poke you in the eye like I've done this 1000 times before poke. Apparently eye poking is all in the elbow. Cops cart him off and server and bartender eventually testify against him in court. 5. Pack of derp in a center and try to order everything we specifically don't carry because we try to keep the frat guys sorority girls out. Flavored vodkas, gijamester, energy drinks, pitchers of beer, etc. They finally settle on Long Island iced teas. Bartender eventually cuts them off because they are wooing so loudly it's driving out everyone except the lurchers probable diddlers. Becky flips out and demands another lit. She's so drunk she doesn't notice the bartender fill up a glass out of the rinse compartment of the sink, squirt a little coke on top, and charge her $9 for it. She gladly pays, downs the sink water, and leaves. 6. Bartender shatters a pint glass and manages to get multiple cuts on both hands. There's no backup and it's too many cuts for band-aids. He puts latex gloves on, duct tapes them around his wrists, and bartends with the gloves slowly filling with blood for a couple of hours. I've also been punched in the face but that story is no fun. I had a brief stint as a bouncer at the Little Bear up in Evergreen, company. One night the band is getting the crowd all worked up, and some ladies get up to dance with the band. I suppose they're feeling confident and start a strip tease chicken tournament. Well. All but one leave the stage after bearing their breasts, but one gets completely nude, and is dancing for about 10 minutes. Of course this is against health code, and that's trouble, but that crowd was ornery, and I wasn't about to get in the middle of that mess and stop the fun. Had a nice view on the balcony too. Of course afterwards the other guys were telling all sorts of outrageous stories. We got yelled at the next day, but not one frick was given. Once a guy tipped me with a coupon for McDicks and that was awesome. 
But a major thing that I've had to deal with it people stealing crap from the club I work at when they think I'm not looking. One of my co-workers had previously beat up a patron for attempting to steal a tip jar. He was just like I honestly didn't even think about it, I just went for him. That's our livelihood. So what happened a few months later is I'm working the bar on a busy night and my tip jars are full. And I'm watching them like a hawk. What do I see? Some butthole trying to take one. My co-worker was totally right about acting before thinking because before the guy even knew it, I had squirrel monkeyed over the bar and grabbed this guy. I had my tip jar and was just going at him until the bouncers came and took over. I'm sorry but there was at least $100 in that tip jar, and I cannot afford to lose that. I am a 5 feet 3, 120 pounds girl BTW. Yes I felt like a badass. My boss kept a tip bag out of sight behind the counter to put in the money from the actual tip jars into. She would empty them out after about $50. Not me but a guy I know worked as a bartender at some hick place. One night a bunch of obviously underage drunk girls walk into the bar. However, this is Louisiana so they are allowed alcohol no problem. This one girl starts hitting on this guy the whole night talking about how if she didn't have a boyfriend she would totally bang him. You know, the usual drunk girl spiel. In the ho, this girl proceeds to get completely inebriated and starts making moves on this guy. At this point the boyfriend has showed up, some meathead looking douche, and starts getting pee at her. They get in a huge fight and the dude storms out of the bar. She turns to the bartender and says well, since I am about to break up with him, what I say we hook up the guy says he's is working and can't leave the bar. So, in her full stealth mode, she slips behind the bar and gives him head while he is serving drinks. They have been dating for 2 years now and have a kid together. All I can think about is what they are going to tell the kid when he asks how they met. I used to work at a real down south redneck bar called Harold's Corral in Cave Creek, as the regulars that would come in were generally pretty nice, and even with a large amount of Hells Angels bikers coming in, and the occasional fight, it was actually pretty tame. One Saturday night there was an absolute prick sitting at the bar, he was in his late 50s, and all night he was hitting on the young, under 18, food runners, and bar backs, and just being a general nuisance. The situation only got worse later on that night when he was properly wasted off his freaking butt. I only noticed that he was crap faced when he got off. Well fell off his stool to go to the bathroom. Usually in these situations the best thing to do is just stop serving him and let him find his way home. Regardless, I didn't really care all too much because I just got to go home early. I walked outside the front door, where there was an outdoor patio area, and the parking lot for the bar. I lit up a cigarette and was checking out a sweet yellow testarossa parked right at the entrance, when out of freaking nowhere, the drunk bastard from the bar, keys in hand, trips, falls and smacks his face on the driver's side door of the Ferrari. Broken nose, blood everywhere, and dirt and rocks all over his face. It turned out it was actually his Ferrari, and the owners of the bar knew him by name. So here's where it gets even funnier. The owners, bouncer, and some people who just saw the incident are helping him. I see my manager calling his wife to come pick him up. Five minutes later and he's in his wife's minivan going home to the kids. Nighty night. TL. DR. Drunk idiot facetplants into his Ferrari, and gets his wife to come pick him up. I work in fine dining. You know, the guy with the vest and the garter? That's me. So I have a rich guy alone at the bar that has run up a $700 tab. Meanwhile, two scumbag steves, I mean as ghetto looking as white boys and look, walk into my bar and ask what cognacs we have. I give them the list and he said, we'll have two shots of this. Pointing to the Louis IE, I ask if he realizes that the stuff costs $150 an ounce. Dude says, yeah, man, ain't crap. Alright then, shorts are one, one stroke two ounces. Fast forward 10 minutes and three rounds and their tab is $1200. Remember the guy sitting alone? H is making fun of them the whole time. These dudes proceed to pay me in cash and gave me a whopping $5 tip. Then the rich guy that was sitting alone decides to pay. His credit card is denied. Dude runs out the bar as soon as my back is turned. TL. DR. Scumbags come in paper and plastic. Sorry, I forgot to include the fact that I had to pay the house 3.5% of my total sales every night. 
Kind of like a hairstylist. The people I worked for at the time gave not one frick and the lack of tip is always deemed lack of service. The setup. I am a straight male bartender and the other guy working with me behind the bar was a flamboyantly gay friend of mine. We worked at a bar down by the waterfront of Toronto and every summer there's a festival called Carabana that goes on down there. The whole Caribbean community from the city and a lot of visitors from the states come up to celebrate and I don't have to tell you that not everyone in the Caribbean community is very friendly to gay people. Anyways at some point in the evening my buddy is serving this giant guy who clearly has a problem with him. He takes a sip of his drink and flips out about how the F doesn't know how to pour a rum and coke and he's chinsing him on the rum and starts tossing out a bunch of slurs. To put it in perspective this man who is now flipping right the frick out is bigger than most of our security and if it comes down to it there will be a huge fight with him and his friends to break up the situation. So as things start to get heated I step in and tell the man I'll take care of him. So I grab a training bottle from the back of our bar. A26 of rum that is actually filled with water to practice free pours and stuff if you need to. And start long pouring him rum and cokes. I be sure to squeeze in at least two limes to try and mask the taste of a watered down coke and hand it over. Ratio 3 stroke 4 once water top with coke equals $6.75. I joked around with him a little bit and he came back about 6 times. He even started to act a little drunk and would tip me. But here's the best part. I wasn't actually using any alcohol off my rail so every time he would come back I would simulate punching in his order and pocket the $6.75. Plus tip. At the end of the night when my friend and I talked about it. He thanked me for trying to calm this guy down but said we probably should have went the security route instead. I handed him 36 bucks. We hugged and remain brothers. Not in a gay way just in I wanna say hey way. TL. DR. Gave homophobic man straight coke with a little water in it. Told him it was rum and coke. Made 36 bucks by pocketing all the money every time he came back. Upvote for awesome story in flight of the Concords reference. I was bartending in a sports bar when a customer started getting rather unruly. He was shouting loudly and crudely at women, and pushing his friends around when they tried to control him. The owner of the bar, my boss, came up to him and asked him to leave. The customer was probably 6 feet 4 inches 230 pounds, and my boss is a 5 feet 4 inches 150 pounds Korean dude in his 40s with a bad temper. The big guy tells him to go frick himself while his smaller friend is in front of him, holding him back. My boss jumps up and roundhouse kicks the guy in the face over his friend's head. Guy drops like a rock and everyone is stunned. Guy's friends pick him up and they leave. Cops eventually come but don't give a crap. Korean business owners are not to be fricked with. I'm a bartender in a college town and have a lot of ridiculous stories, but this one takes a cake. My college considered a football school and when people tailgate, they go hard. Like waking up at 4.30am to shotgun beer hard. By the time the game is over at 3pm most people are just crap faced. The bar I work at also serves Mexican food making it popular for said wasted folk. One Saturday evening, in the middle of the dinner rush, a group of drunk 30 or 40 somethings come in to order drinks. The ladies flirt with the male bartenders, I'm female, drink their margaritas, then go on to a different bar. Nothing crazy. A few hours later I find an id on the floor and it happened to belong to one of those women so we put it in the bar drawer in case she came back for it. A couple hours pass before one of the ladies not the one whose id we found, comes staggering back into the bar demanding to know where her friend is. She is borderline hysterical and starting to cause a scene so the male bartenders try to take her aside and calm her down while I take care of making drinks. Suddenly one of the guys starts yelling at the woman, who is now trying to swing at him. He turned all of the lights off, seemed at everyone to get out, and continued to reason with this woman while other bartender and I close up tabs and get people out. Cops were called and some guy, a husband, I think, dragged her out of the bar. Turns out, the woman came in because her friend said she had gone back to get her id and when she asked for it, the two male bartenders took her downstairs to the office to get it and proceeded to gang debauch her in the office. In reality, the friend never came back to the bar at all, just completely made up this bull story for no reason other than she was blackout drunk. Remember, these women are around 40 years old. Two days later, the friend came in, sober, 
to see if she left her id there. Had no recollection of the event. What in the frick? Accusing people of rape is seriously fricked up. Their lives could have been changed forever because of one dumb, drunk bee. I'm glad it was blown off due to obviously being fake but god dang. I had a customer who asked me to be his permanent mistress, as his wife is chronically ill. He offered to buy me a house and a car, and pay all the bills, as long as I gave him a boy child heir. True story. I said no, but thanks equals. Good girl Gina, has a chance to dig gold, doesn't. Not my story, but the story of my 60 year old coworker. This guy I work with is very quiet, but friendly. Everyone loves him and comes to see him serving drinks. This man is old enough to retire, but chooses to stay because he loves what he does. One night, this man gets too drunk and starts calling him names. Bartender remains not at all phased. Finally, the man calls the bartender's mother a W. In one freaking leap, the bartender jumps about 5 feet into the air and on top of the bar. No hands. He used his freaking 60 year old legs. He then jumps off the bar and says to the drunk man, You can call me old. You can call me ugly. But don't you ever talk about my mother that way. Now get out. We never saw that drunk man again. My guess is he went to therapy after realizing he confronted old superman in a bar. I am not buying the jumping onto the bar without using his hands part, but a good story otherwise. Sounds like a cool old dude. Colon. Not my story, but I worked at the restaurant where this happened. Frequently minor celebrities will come eat dinner at this restaurant. One night a particular older brunette bimbo comes in. She's going through a divorce and is in to have a good time. She starts drinking and attempts to French the gay owner, makes a fool of herself of course. She proceeds to get more drunk. It's past closing and she has fallen asleep in one of the booths. The bartender and the owner drive her home. Upon opening her door to get her inside her five little yappy dogs run out the door and into the dark. The bartender starts laughing and so does the owner. They end up dropping the lady and chasing the dogs down for her. She gave the bartender a $200 tip. I had this regular customer in a little town bar who is sort of a sad sack 45 years old, lives with his mom and dad still, is probably functionally retarded as far as his IQ goes. Anyway, one stormy night he comes wandering in and tells me it's his birthday and said his mom let me use her car since it's my birthday so, I know that Doug hasn't had a license in years and his mom is a legendary butthole. And therefore this was a bull's story. He goes in the men's room and leaves me alone with one other customer. Next thing I know, the door slams open, and there stands Doug's elderly psycho mother, in a house coat, curlers, slippers and a parka. She is rain soaked and starts screeching at me, me, because her son stole her car to go drinking. The lightning outside is flashing, silhouetting her monarchal frame in the doorway. Her voice is as loud as a bullhorn. The lone dude in the bar and I were slack jawed. It was like a bad movie. Doug was now hiding in the men's room and pretending not to hear me screaming at him to come out and deal with his mother. He stayed in there for easily 5 minutes more while his mother ripped me and butthole. I finally had to threaten the old bag with the police to calm her down. The whole thing was like a David Lynch movie. I had a regular. He had had a tracheotomy, and wore a scarf to cover the hole in his throat. He spoke with a voice box, or as the other patrons called it, the cancer kazoo. He was a really nice guy, and smart too. He drank Paulino Weiss, with a lemon. We served them properly with a tall one stroke two liter glasses. He was a large man, and could drink seven or eight before showing signs of drunkenness. And that, of course, is when the fun started. The first sign was he would quiet down for a while. I was often amazed at the power of his voice box's battery. That dude could talk. Then he would start to lecture me about my smoking. This was in the early 90s, when you could smoke in bars. And then I would start to ignore him. I learned soon enough that if I ignored him long enough, he would leave. It was time for him to go anyway, because he was drunk, and he was easy to ignore, because of the limited volume capacity of his voice box. Then one day, after he was drunk and I had begun the not so subtle step of ignoring him to make him go away, I hear this loud buzzer. It sounded like a frigging cow getting electroshock therapy. I look down the bar at the direction of the sound, and there is my friend, wearing the biggest goddamned crap eating grin you have ever seen. He had gotten a new voice box. This one had a buzzer, 
a very freaking annoying buzzer. I had to actually start cutting him off when he used it, because he was in fact quite drunk, and ignoring him was no longer an option. Fortunately, I moved on to a career in my field of study shortly after this, so only had to suffer the sound for a few weeks. I respect bartending as a legitimate career. I apologize for the misstatement, because I do so very much love good bartenders, and they have my utmost respect. Cancer Kazoo. I worked on a hotel bar most weekends, usually covering weddings in the huge ballroom. A story that sticks in my mind is the groom getting plastered drunk until we have to cut him off, should he make a fool of himself on his wedding day night. He comes up to order a drink, and slurs out an order for two beers. I say he can't have any more. He says frick this, I don't need this crap, and bails out of the ballroom. He was caught fricking one of the waiters up the butt in the disabled restroom about 15 minutes later. The kicker, the waiter was a very very gay man. Read the first line as I hoard. You have been visited by the source Chihuahua, you will be blessed with good pasta, but only if you comment simmer well. Papa simmer well papa, like and subscribe you magnificent person.